cure your gear acquisition syndrome with this camera. I want to tell you why I feel that XT50 it's the cure for your gas. Let's talk about this now. Hi there, look what I have here in hand. It's XT50 and here it is all input. So MDM 10 Mark IV and XT50, it is as small and as light as Olympus. And uh, this is a big thing. Also, it has IBIS. So we will talk about this. But before, please subscribe now, now, now to my channel. So let's talk about XT50 and why XT50 is a game changer for the camera world itself. Not just for the Micro Four Cell system, but also for Leica, also for Sony, also for Nikon, Sony PSC and so on. So first of all, I want to address XT50 a little versus Micro Four Thirds. I've used the XT50 with this kit lens and with the 35 meters f1.4, also with pro lenses and so on. First of all, the firmware of XT50, it is very, very good firmware. The battery life is as good as XT5 after the firmware update. But we'll talk at the chapter of XT50 versus XT5, talking about gas. So let's address just a little XT50 versus small Micro Four Thirds cameras. So look here. XT50, it is as small as Olympus OMD M10 Mark IV, Olympus OMD M5, OM5, and so on. And it has IBIS almost at the same level, but with a 40 megapixel APS-C sensor. Should I enter in more details when we are talking about this? Let's talk just about lenses. So you could say, okay, Micro Four Thirds, has smaller lenses. I have here Sigma 56mm f1.7 and here it is Olympus 45mm f1.8, so equivalent lenses. And I'm telling you that these lenses have similar size. These lenses have similar size and similar weight. And more than that, being an APS-C lens on an APS-C sensor, you'll get better image quality. So talking about lenses, you have the lenses now on Fujifilm. You have third-party lenses that are as small as Micro Four Thirds lenses and are better because they are APS-C lenses. This is it. You have those. Next, you have the zooms, Tamron zooms, Fujifilm zooms. But yes, I do agree regarding zooms, Olympus and Lumix are staying better on the Micro Four Thirds system. So this is a chapter where Fujifilm is losing it a little. But other than that, for uh, street photography, for family photography, for day-to-day -day photography, where you want better image quality, I feel that XT50, that it's as small as a Micro Four Thirds camera, it's a great, great replacement for a Micro Four Thirds user that wants a small camera that now knows to focus. So it's focusing very good, much better than Olympus. It has very good IAF and all it's really, really good. So the camera, it's much better than entry level or small Micro Four Thirds camera. So this is it. This is the truth. Even if you are a Micro Four Thirds fanboy, I'm sorry, but Fujifilm XT50, it's much better than Olympus and Lumix cameras and it's normal because Olympus and Lumix cameras didn't bring anything new to the market regarding small cameras with better AF, better image quality and so on. So this is really, really next level, really next level for Fujifilm. So we cured the Micro Four Thirds gas. Now let's go to the Fujifilm gas. Can XT50 replace XT5? So here it is, XT50 versus XT5. Do you really need XT5? Let's think about this. You have similar specs on XT50. And not just similar specs, the firmware is much better. It's a refined firmware. XT5, it's a camera that they've tried to make it better over the time, but I feel they succeeded and not succeeded. So there are ups and downs regarding the firmware updates regarding XT5. And this is very frustrating for an XT5 long-term user. And nowadays, with the latest firmware, the battery of XT5 is not as performant as was with the previous firmware. So the battery with the firmware 4.0 is lasting 
less than it was lasting on firmware 2.0 or 3.0. So less battery juice on XT5 because of the battery update. Also, there are some reports regarding more noise at high ISO levels because of the latest firmware update on XT5. So you must always wait for the next firmware update to have a re bug resolved, but they will induce another bug. And this is not okay. Fujifilm XT5 was functioning very, very well with firmware 2.0. Now, yes, it has better IAF. I do agree with this. The IAF, especially with the 35mm f1.4, but with other lenses, it is very good. But also, is the AF of XT50. So, battery life regarding both of these two cameras is almost identical with the latest firmware update of XT5. So, what you get compared to XT50? You'll get a bigger camera, and this is not something that I personally want because it's not a professional camera. XT5 doesn't have the option to add the power grip with batteries for professional event photography and wedding photography. So you buy this camera for your hobby in general. So you buy a bigger camera for your hobby. So why buy a bigger camera for your hobby? For your hobby photography, for your day-to-day -day photography, I would choose a smaller camera. So XT50 is winning it here. Next, you have weather sealing. I'm not using weather sealing too much. I don't shoot in heavy rain and in heavy snow. When this is happening, I'm using an umbrella or a protection because I really don't trust too much the weather sealing of uh, Fujifilm cameras. So weather sealing, again, it's discussable. It depends from user to user. I don't need it. And I really do prefer a smaller camera which I can take with me and use an umbrella. Next, you have two SD cards. I never had a card failed on me. In 20 years of photography, I didn't have a card, an SD card failed on me. So again, it's cool to have two SD cards if you are a professional and if you are using it for wedding photography where you want backup, it's normal, okay. But for hobby photography, where I can change SD cards and I didn't have problems with SanDisk cards or with Kingston cards, I don't need two SD cards. So what I win here, I win again better firmware, better IAF operation. The IAF of this XT50 is looking for the eye in your zone focusing system. On my XT5, it was looking for the eye on the entire image. I don't know if with the latest firmware 4.0, they've changed this. I didn't observe it yet. I will try to test it to see in the future. But again, you don't have the zone options that I have on XT50 on XT5. So the firmware of XT5, it is much, much better. Now regarding the infamous film dial, I wasn't a fan at first when looking at it. But now, after using it, I've totally changed my mind. I do agree that they can improve the film dial by putting recipes on FS1, FS2 and FS3 and let the other standard film simulations of Fujifilm the same. And why is that? Because, first of all, they've changed the Q menu. You have the cumbersome Q menu on XT5 and the cumbersome Q menu on XT50 that it's a little more cumbersome Yes, I do agree because they put power options on the Q menu on XT50. So on XT50, if you will set the camera to boost mode on Q1, it will keep it on boost mode on Q1. But if you put the camera in Q2 and you don't set power mode to normal or to boost, we'll keep it to normal or to economy. So yes, a little tricky here, but this is where the film dial comes into play. The film dials is helping you have in a way, the ergonomics of the previous Q features that were on X100V X Pro 3 cameras. So the workflow with the film dial, overall it is better. When you want a film simulation, you can go in the Q menu, if not, keep the camera not on a Q slot and change the settings by using the film dial. So you are back to how Fujifilm was previously working, but also you can set some 
customer recipes on the queue slots. If they will put, how I've said, custom recipes just on FS1, FS2, and FS3, this is another discussion. If they will put this, they will totally, totally kill X106, XT5, and other cameras for me that don't have the film dial. So the film dial, it's really, really something, and I really do hope they will update it like this with a firmware. Probably just then I will update it because now XT50 for me, it's working like a breeze. So great image quality, silent mechanical shutter, great IBs, easy to use, better in hand. It's more balanced than XT5 and really the balancing of the camera really matters, really matters. XT5, it's a camera that must be used with two hands. I can use XT50 with one hand and with this lens that has a very bad aperture, fc.5, because of the IBIS, because of the optical image stabilization, I get more in sharp pictures than with XT5 with one hand. So point and shoot, point and shoot and snap. So crazy good. XT50 is really next level. And I don't think they will improve XT5 at this level. Probably this level will be at XT6. So this is it for me. Now regarding other small cameras from Fujifilm. Why would you need the X100V? Why would you need the X106? Just for the looks? Okay, just for the looks. But other than that, XT50, it's killing it. It's killing XT30 Mark II. It's killing XT4. It's killing all the Fujifilm cameras. It is so, so good. I'm totally in love with what XT50 is doing. And by the way, another good thing to address here is that XT50 is not overheating. I've used it in summer nowadays at 40 degrees plus with clarity effect and it wasn't overheating. <laughs> Crazy good. My Nikon Z5 was closing because of the heat. So the camera is good. Very, very good. Now look here. XT50 versus Leica. Both have Voigtlander lenses. So I have here Leica versus XT50. And uh, look at the rounded design. <laughs> look at the rounded design. You have the film dial, you have great AF, and you have a great lens that is rendering Leica-like images, full frame-like images with great, great image quality. The Voigtlander, and it's a manual focusing lens. Also Leica, it's a manual focusing camera. But also on Fujifilm, you can add the 35mm f1.4 that it's rendering like alike images. You can add the 60mm macro lens f2.4 that it's rendering like Leica images with great micro contrast and other great lenses. So you have great manual focusing lenses and great AF lenses that are rendering almost like a like images with film simulations and the film die. The only thing that you don't have is a range finder and yes, a full frame sensor. But again, the sensor of XT5 with the color science and with the tweaking that Fujifilm did will render create beautiful images, like a like images, and the experience it's near a Leica. You'll be closer to a Leica when they will release an X Pro 4. And I did a review when I've compared Leica versus X Pro 3 and how the rangefinder experience is on X Pro 3. And you can check that video to see my impressions because lots of Leica users will tell you, no, you don't get close with Fujifilm. But Long story short, you'll get very close with Fujifilm, especially with x -Pro c But also if you don't want x -Pro c and an optical viewfinder, and if you want a small capable camera, then X-T50 is the way to go. But how X-T50 is comparing to a full frame camera, let's say like Sony A7C. So I have here Sony A7C with 35mm f2.8 Zeiss lens, and of course, X-T50. Now, what is important is that when we are talking about Sony, we are talking about great AF and a great full frame sensor. So I will treat these subjects. How is the AF of X-T50 compared to Sony A7C? Well, it's almost a Sony A7C. It is really almost a Sony A7C. With the 35mm f1.4, I was amazed how easily it was for me to take in sharp pictures with IAF with my kids that were moving fast and so on. So the IAF with XT50 nowadays, it's a breeze. Again, not at the level of Sony, but really, really a breeze. So it's almost 
there also I've used XT50 with 15 meters f1.8 a third party lens from Yongnuo with IAF and the results were really really good. I have a friend that is a big fan of Sony and he is using Sony 7C for wedding photography and when I showed him the pictures made with XT50 and Yongnuo 15mm f1.8 Pro lens he said that the image quality is looking like Sony but with the colors of Fujifilm. So this is my take on Fujifilm XT50 and why this camera it is so so good. So yes, you are able now to see that XT50 can really cure your gas, your gear acquisition syndrome. The camera is a top-notch camera, very small, great IBIS, great image quality, great AF, great ergonomics. So I'm really loving this camera and I can't recommend it even more. So you could say that XT50 is expensive, but when you are looking at all what I've showed you, XT50 it really becomes a bargain. And I'm really serious about this because the firmware of XT50, it's at another level. It is really at another level compared to what Fujifilm did till now with 65 and with other cameras that I've tried. I really do hope Fujifilm will raise the bar and improve the XT5 firmware and other cameras, but the XT50 firmware, how it's operating, the AF and all the goodies that this camera is able to deliver are at another, another level. Why I'm so thrilled? Because it's small and I was missing a small capable Fujifilm camera. Really loving XT50 and if you're liking content like this please subscribe now 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 to my channel use my affiliate links if you want to buy something from the gear that I'm using and please be sure to check my next videos about Fujifilm and camera gear. Thank you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.